My name is Lindsay Wood Davis. I am the chair of the radio committee of the city of Monona. And tonight, we're going to, yes, there's a radio committee, because we're going to have a radio station. We are going to have a radio station. Now, in order to get this off the right way, we're going to do something really kind of odd. I'm going to ask everybody in here to relax, close your eyes, and you're going back to 1964. Close your eyes. Here we go. Radio. Why should I advertise on radio? There's nothing to look at, no pictures. Listen, you can do things on radio you couldn't possibly do on TV. That'll be the day. All right, watch this. <clears throat> Okay, people, and now when I give you the cue, I want the 700-foot mountain of whipped cream to roll into Lake Michigan, which has been drained and filled with hot chocolate. Then the Royal Canadian Air Force will fly overhead towing a 10-ton maraschino cherry, which will be dropped into the whipped cream to the cheering of 25,000 extras. All right, cue the mountain. Cue the Air Force. Okay, 25,000 cheering extras. Now, you want to try that on television? Well... You see, radio is a very special medium because it stretches the imagination. Doesn't television stretch the imagination? Up to 27 inches, yes. Open your eyes back up. That's radio from 1964, but you know what? It's still radio today. Radio is the most visual of all mediums because you get to see what you see, not what somebody else tells you to see. So tonight we're going to talk about Monona's very own radio station. Let's talk about the purpose of this meeting, the process we're going to go through tonight, and the payoff that you're all going to get for having come through that unbelievably cold weather. And I want to thank each and every one of you for doing that. Purpose. For some of you, this is the first you will have really heard of this. So we're going to cover enough information in here so that you know what this is about. Others have been involved in this process, no joke, for eight years. I see some smiles in the crowd. So they are going to want to know, hey, is this really happening finally? Yes, it is really happening finally. So the purpose of this is to start Monona's very own radio station. The process. We're going to talk about engineering, programming, studios, equipment, how you can be involved, who is involved, all the people who've helped to get it to this point, all those different things. That's the process we're going to follow. At the end of this session, we're going to have the reveal of our call letter winner. We had a great contest. We had more than 100 entries in our call letter contest. Really fun. So we're going to do that. And then lots and lots of room for questions. The payoff. Monona's very own radio station and how you can be involved. This is an all-volunteer effort. You don't know how heartwarming it is to see this many people in this room because we're all going to do this. About two years ago, Monona celebrated its 75th anniversary. And one of the wonderful things about that anniversary was looking at all the historic documents. Things like, oh, the minutes of the first meeting, which was held in the Monona Motors building. The idea of ferries going back and forth between the Monona shores and what is now Monona Terrace downtown. Lots and lots of real history. We hope in 23 years, at the 100th anniversary of Monona, somebody's going to go, how did that radio station get started? And when they ask that question, we're going to play a video. Where's Paul? And this video is of that man. Paul, stand up. Look at him. Now sit down, Paul. Thank you. Because this all starts with that man right there. This is how this all began. It was probably uh, every bit of eight years ago that I had 
been sitting there in my van uh, waiting for my wife to come out of the, the pharmacy at uh, Monona Drive and uh, Flom Roads and I was tuning around on the FM band and happened to find what sounded like announcements for a high school and so I made the assumption that it was La Follette High School. I thought, wow, they have a radio station at La Follette. And then I listened to it more carefully and it went through the loop a couple times and it was coming from Monona Grove High School. What it ended up being was one of the tech ed teachers, Mr. Otto, I came to find out, had a system that you plug into the wall and it uses the uh, wires in the 110 volt system as the transmission system. And so being in that field, I found it very exciting and, and knowing my friend Lindsey Davis was uh, also someone who's very involved in broadcasting for many years, that he would find that exciting too. So that's, that's why I quick called him and you immediately get thinking about the possibilities and why not our community? Sure, you'll see some value in this in terms of it being the voice of our community, a place where people can share ideas and to then overall improve on our community. And that's probably the biggest part of it to me. What you'll be getting is what collectively we all put into it. As an engineer at Wisconsin Public Broadcasting Educational communications board. Paul loves radio and he hasn't quit thinking about this for eight years. Yeah. Hit any key to continue. Let's see, that's what's supposed to be there. We'll do that in a minute. Okay. Um, so I want to thank Paul. We, and we really wanted to get that down because that's really how this began with a phone call from the parking lot of the Walgreens. Uh, Paul Meyer, Bob Miller, me, and somebody else I'll introduce you and have been at this the whole time. And so to have all you here tonight to share this, I can't tell you how fun this is. Um, we have some people here tonight I want to introduce. They're all gonna speak in a minute, but not yet. Where is Mayor Bob Miller? He's writing back there. Bob Miller was a young, peach-fuzz city councilman when somebody called him up and said, Bob, we got to have a radio station. He just nodded. Alder Mary O'Connor, where are you? She's right there. Mary is the chair of what is now the Monona Community Media Committee of the city council. She's been there the whole way. I don't think Mary knew anything about the technical side of radio when this began. And she's pretty astute at what she does now. Thank you. Dan Olson, I see Dan right there, superintendent of schools, Monona Grove Public Schools. From the very first meeting, Dan said, yep, we want to be involved in this. And the guy who sort of helped us right along, Pat, where are you? Way in back, Patrick Marsh, our city administrator, economic development guy, has helped us out at every step of the way. You'll meet Will Nimmo in just a little bit. He is the Official, I mean, we get it right, I'm going to get it right here, the media coordinator for the city of Monona and for the Monona Grove Public Schools. And you're also going to meet, where's, there he is, you hit on me, Tom Tuber, who is our program director of our radio station. So you're going to meet all those people. But let's go now to Mayor Bob, come on up. Now, Everybody else is going to do brief comments, but you can't say to the mayor, you can only do brief comments, Bob. But at every step, this guy said, yep, let's do this. And boy, it's going to happen because of his work. Thank you very much, Lindsay. So those of you who are my Facebook friends, first things first. All right, group photo. Everyone smile on three. One, two, three. All right, watch your Facebook pages. Welcome to 98.7 FM. Our Stacks of Wax this evening will be featuring the greatest hits of all of Monona. And there are a number of hits here. And as Lindsay alluded to just a little bit, we would kill when we were doing an $8 million budget to have one-tenth of the audience here tonight. I talked to Dan Olson. 
when he has the annual school meeting, one-tenth of this crowd. So radio is where it's at. And for me, that's hard to say, having most of my professional life been on the video side. I closed my eyes. I saw the maraschino cherry land in Lake Michigan. So I surrender. I am not worthy. So true what Lindsay alluded to about eight years ago, Paul Meyer. And Paul, any of, the, any of you who have the honor of being a friend of Paul's, he thinks big, he talks big, he dreams big. And eight years ago, I was the chair of the media committee as an alder, and he approached, he brought this subject up, and I'm like, sure, Paul, sure, Paul. You know, we'll get two tin cans and a record player, and we'll do something somewhere. And he's like, no, no, we have to go after this. And after eight years, to your credit, Paul, we're, we're getting there. We're very close to that. The other thing I want to share tonight, which is such a special night, and there's so many reasons why Monona is so special and why I love what uh, I do as mayor, because of the residents. And until this radio station happened, I did not realize how blessed or how fortunate we are with the talent for media that we have resident to Monona or within the confines very close by. I was estimating on this project the donated time that has been given by professionals like our chair, Lindsay Davis, and Tom Tuber, and it, we probably have over a half million dollars of time by nationally and internationally famous engineers, program directors. Um, I, I, taught, I spoke with Tom Walker, who's the CEO of Midwest Family Radio today, and I said, we're having this event tonight, we're announcing. And I told him, everyone who's helped, there's not a radio station in this marketplace that's not envious of the talent that has come together donating their time to make this happen and will continue to make this happen. So I thank everyone who has touched this project. I'm so grateful. We are so grateful. And if you've been to City Hall, you see the station is underway. And as you walk in, you'll be able to look through. I remember in Durand, Wisconsin, where my bride grew up nearby, the radio station was in a storefront, and you could see the radio station in Duran. We're bringing back, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We are bringing back radio announcing to the city hall, the glass window, you'll be able to see Will and all of his merry band of volunteers participating in this radio station. And it's also a radio station, it's not two tin cans and a record player. We are a state-of-the-art radio station that's being put together, a six-figure in cost radio station that is the envy of the Midwest families and the Clear Channel radio stations. But being the politician here, I do want to note not one cent of taxpayer dollars are being spent to make this come to fruition. All of you who subscribe to Charter or to UVerse and pay your steep monthly cable bills, there is a surcharge on those bills that, it, that goes back to the community of license. And so over the years, as Paul Meyer started to dream the dream, we've been kind of tucking away this rainy day fund to um, hoping that someday the federal government would allow local radio station licenses to be released again. So we have tucked away our savings account and we're bringing that out. So not one penny of taxpayer dollars is being spent on this project. And so without further ado, I look forward to, again, I commend every one of you for coming out tonight. This is going to be so exciting as we have the Litchfields rolling out their jazz programming, as we have Tom Tuber, who is legendary. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we did not rehearse last night, did we? So here, you take it from here. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You're a star. Yep. He is a star. Now, before we get on to a couple other people, I want to ask one question here and give you one in piece of instruction. 
Raise your hand, please, if you are not from Monona. Okay, so about maybe a third, quarter to a third. You are absolutely welcome here. Absolutely welcome. There will be a moment a little later on where you'll be asked to leave because we'll be discussing Bob's secret plan for Monona's world domination. But other than that, we love having you here. When you do ask questions, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, when you do ask questions, if you're from Monona, we want you to say your name and say the street you're from. You do not need to say your address. But say, I'm Lindsey Wood Davis from McKenna Road. I'm Bob Miller from Winnequa. I'm Paul Meyer from Shore Acres. We want to hear that. And if you're not from Monona, say the town you're from, OK? And speaking of questions, I want you to write them down and hold them till the end. We're going to have a big question and answer session at the end. And there's every chance that the question you're going to ask, we may well answer. And we'd like to answer it in the order we have up here rather than when you ask it. Everybody got that? OK. Mary. Mary O'Connor, Chair of the Community Media Committee. Thank you, Lindsay. I'd like to welcome all of you on behalf of the Community Media Committee as well as the City Council. Um, when I was appointed to this committee almost three years ago, I, as Lindsay said, I did not know much about radio. I ran an audiovisual collection as a librarian for years, but radio wasn't part of that. So it's been a real education. Um, I would just like to thank a couple of people. First of all, uh, Paul Meyer for his inspiration. All of these wonderful, talented people that Lindsay has managed to persuade uh, to come and help us develop this. It's been just really something to see the talent he's accumulated. Um, Will Nimau, who is our, stepped in as our new community media director uh, last summer sometime and has really taken the ball and, and run with it. It's it's a whole new thing for him, too, and he's done a terrific job. And finally, Lindsay, uh, for his enthusiasm and has really spearheaded this whole thing and really gotten it going ever since we got our license. So thank you very much. Dan Olson is the superintendent of school. Thank you. Um, this has just been an, an unbelievably um, you know, great experience for me and, and for our school district uh, to go through. I'm not sure how many people are aware that uh, the group that we have working behind the cameras tonight and with the equipment are all Monona Grove High School students. And we've had a tremendous partnership with the city of Monona for many years with regard to uh, the cable television and all the videotaping um, and, and broadcasts of not only school events but city events. And that's all been that partnership with the school district. And so when we had this opportunity to continue this partnership with the radio, it, it was really a no-brainer. It, it was such an, um, it wasn't even a hesitation. Of course we're going to. This is going to not, you know, provide another wonderful opportunity for our students. And, and the other thing that's so great, we've already heard a lot about, you know, the volunteers. And for me, this was the easiest job in the world. All I had to do is go to the committee meetings and say, yes, we'll do this. this is, these are good ideas. We've got so many volunteers and, and people uh, in the school district as well uh, that have assisted. I, I'd like to you know, mention a couple of people that are here tonight that also are associated with the school district that have been part of this. Uh, Carl Davick is one of our teachers, uh, music teachers orchestra at the high school, is also sits on the committee. Uh, Susan Manning, one of our board members, is also on the committee and all the other staff that we have at school and the teachers. You know, as mentioned earlier, uh, one of our tech ed teachers, Jeff Otto, um, the work that he's done. And so that's where it, it's so easy. We have such talented people in the district and all we need to do as a school district is provide that opportunity and the partnership. And, and so this is something that we're so excited about as well and, and just really feel honored that we have an opportunity to participate. So thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, Patrick Marsh, come on up, Pat. I too would like to um, thank everybody for coming this evening. One of the best parts of, of this job is that um, we're surrounded in the city of Monona by not only uh, great residents, but a great staff. Um, our city staff works really hard for all of you, and I'm really proud of that, and, and they've done such a great job. Um, as 
Mayor Bob mentioned too, the, uh, the volunteers in this community are second to none. I've worked in several different communities over the years and, and have never seen a more active com community. Uh, the number of residents that truly love Monona, um, want to take part in the activities of Monona and um, actually get, uh, um, get, get their hands dirty doing it. So this is, this is a great project for the city. Our staff is really excited about it. We see it as another um, opportunity to communicate with the residents and um, the, re the rest of the region. Um, you know, that's really what, what government is about, is good communication. And I think this is going to be uh, a great tool for us. So thanks again for coming tonight. All right, here we go. Let's talk about where we've come from and where we're going. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, why did it take eight years? When Paul made that call, and we called Bob Miller, and I called a friend of mine, an attorney in Washington, and said, okay, David, explain to me the low-power FM situation. He said, well, everything's on hold. The application window is closed. He said, they say it'll be 90 days before it opens. He says, but I think it could be six months. Six years later, we got a call saying, hey, they're going to open the window up. It took six years for the government to come to some sort of rapprochement among different groups. And we got to put in our application. 2,873 other people also send in an application. We assume, because there was this monster number of applications, that that was going to take at least six months for us to get approval. Six weeks later, we get a call saying, they started approving today, and you're in the first batch of approvals. 98.7, nobody else had applied for that, at that frequency. We'd had a really good Washington attorney work on it. The staff at the city of Monona had worked on it. And you know what? We got our license. But we were also told it has to go on the air on July, by July 15th of 2015. We had 18 months to put it on the air. So that's the quick version of how we got our license. When you start building a radio station, you don't start with program. Oops, what have I done here? Wait a minute, there we go. I hit the wrong button. You start with engineering. Because if you don't have a signal, who cares what your programming is? We put together an engineering all-star team. I really want you to see who these people are. Two of them are in the crowd. All right, this is our engineering committee. Terry Bond, he's director of engineering and operations for the Wisconsin Educational Communications Board. Terry Bond is head, head of engineering for all of Wisconsin public broadcasting, all of it. He also is, oh, let's see, the former president of the International Society of Broadcast Engineers, a member of their Hall of Fame, a member of the Wisconsin Broadcasting Hall of Fame. That's where we begin. Rich Wood. Rich Wood lives in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. He owns Resident Results. He's what's referred to in the biz as a tower guy. He's a tower consultant. The tallest structures in North America aren't buildings, they're broadcast towers. Whether you're going to the top of the Sears Tower, now Willis Tower or Hancock, or the tallest structure in North America, which is a broadcast tower in North Dakota, when you get to the top, you'll find Rich Wood's fingerprints there. This is a world-renowned consulting engineer. John Bauer, corporate director of engineering for Midwest Family Broadcasting. He lives in Stoughton. When he built their studios out on Rayovac Boulevard on the west side, Radio World Magazine called those studios the studios of the decade. He's designed our studio and is involved sometimes daily in helping us put it together. Mike Norton, Mike, raise your hand. There he is, right back there in the corner. Mike Norton, engineer, again, with ECB and Wisconsin Broadcasting, Wisconsin Public Broadcasting. Mike's expertise is digital. We will stream from day one. We will have a tune-in app for your smartphone on day one. 
I know Mary's leaving for Florida in a couple of days. Next year at this time, you'll go to Florida, you'll pick up your smartphone, you'll hit the TuneIn app, you'll hit the Monona radio button, and there we are. You'll get us anywhere in the country. Pretty cool, huh? Thank you, Mike. Paul Meyer, you don't think Paul wouldn't be on the committee, do you? After all, bowing and scraping to him like this? Paul's a really good engineer, and having him literally here in town, what a fabulous thing. So that's engineering. So we did how we got our license. We did, oh, back here. When we applied, we assumed we were gonna put the antenna and studios at the high school. After we got the license and all the engineers sat together, it was determined that a way better place for that tower would be a place that you'll see when you walk out of this building at the top of the hose tower where the cell phone antenna is. Uh, that hose tower is owned by the city. The, ant the whole structure is leased, is owned by US Cellular. We will be adding on to that. That takes a change in application to the FCC. We're involved in that right now. So we're moving that, and the studios will be at City Hall, as you'll see in a little bit. Where will the signal reach? Where will your Monona radio station go to? Okay, this is based on that high school antenna. So see that little red dot? That's the high school. That green dot is about where we're sitting right now, which is about really where it is. The signal might get to McFarland, probably not. I will tell you that the carp in Upper Mud Lake will get wonderful reception. The signal will go past the interstate. That's important and I'll explain that in a minute. The signal will get right about to the airport. The signal will hit Maple Bluff and we think importantly, the signal will cover the state capitol. The isthmus gets covered. But the important thing is to realize that not only is this Monona's station, but that we blanket the east side. And that's an important consideration for this radio station, okay? So that's where we cover. We'll just about cover the campus, we believe. Not maybe all the way over to Picnic Point, but most of that way. So that's where the coverage will be. Bob alluded to this very important point. Quality of our equipment and ease of use. This isn't a hobby. This isn't somebody's idea of a radio kit. This is a real radio station put together by some of the finest broadcast engineers in the industry, we will have nothing but high quality equipment that will last and will be easy for all our volunteers to use. It has to be easy because it's volunteers. So this is really good stuff. I will tell you that sitting in City Hall is a box and that box contains our transmitter from Nova Scotia. That made it real to me in a way nothing else has so far. We have a transmitter. It's a Nautel. You won't have any idea what that is. It's like a cast iron hammer. The, you can't break a Nautel transmitter. It's a fabulous tool. We will have superb remote broadcast capability. Now, yeah, remotes that you can think of. Certainly, Monona Grove High School football. Use that as an example. You've heard that on cable for years, yeah? But they've always been home games. No, we'll be covering all the away games too. That's the everyday sort of stuff. Yes, we'll do home talent baseball, but we'll also allow people to broadcast from their homes with them using the equipment because it's simple, it's bulletproof, and it's proven. This is the good stuff. So, I want to introduce Will Nimmo. Will, where are you? There he is. Um, Will is, again, the, the new community media coordinator for the city. He started on radio in college in Watertown, Wisconsin. Exotic Watertown, Wisconsin. He worked at WISC-TV. We stole him from Madison Media Institute. He's just been a wonderful addition to this operation. I got to tell you, it's been great getting Will Nimmo here. And Will, uh, I'm just going to give you all of this and let you proceed going through it. All right. So uh, I want to go through 
community media just a little bit. And I uh, was going to start my phone so I didn't go too long, but I promise I'm going to make it brief. Um, I want to talk about, not backwards, I want to go forwards. I mean, community media, right? That, that includes all these students back here. Berkeley's in the back. She's a freshman in high school. She is a rock star. She's here all the time. Micah is behind the board back there. He is the senior leader. We'll call you, right? You like that. And Tommy, wild man Tom, he's behind the camera. And Justin and I, with the hat on, we are running community media. Justin has been taking the helms with video while I try to get radio going. And our plan is to make people rethink what they think about community media. Um, you know, when I grew up, it was Channel 4, right? You just, there you are. And it was never that good. No offense to anyone who maybe created something back then, right? But it was always the psychedelic stuff, or it was something kind of scratchy, or the, it wasn't, uh, it, the fidelity wasn't very good, we'll call it. Um, we want to change that, and we're trying to, again, get really good equipment. So the equipment we have around here, the cameras, are very good. We have the Black Magic Switcher. We're trying to not only get high quality equipment, but be where you are. I guess that's what I think about. <clears throat> I think about how much. I look at a screen all day. My phone, my computer, the tablet, TV. We are a screen society. We look at a screen all the time to get information. How can we use that screen to get to you? How can we help you with that screen? That's what I'm going to look at. And if it's TV, great. If it's not TV, where is it? Let's do that. So that's my plan moving forward. And we just started streaming in HD. Justin just built the, quit the computer the other day. So we will be streaming in high def on YouTube for the uh, majority of the sporting events for high school. Because we are located right now, our TV studio is located in the high school. And all these volunteers come out and help out. They're just in the media club at the high school. They don't get paid and they go to sporting events, football, basketball. Um, <clears throat> and as Lindsay alluded, it's just in the high school now. It's just home games. Hopefully when radio comes about, right, we'll travel and we'll go to the away games as well. But these high schoolers are running the station right now and they're doing a great job. So there's our studio. <laughs> it's a beaut. No, there it is. It's gotten a little further since then. Uh, right there I'm standing in the studio and um, this is a window. They put some studs in there to, until we get the glass in there. Um, but uh, I'm standing in the studio. The ladder and the gentleman up there for the HVAC is in the little production room. And it's going to be nice. There's lots of windows. It's nice and comfy. The lights are going to dim for you. You can set the mood, right? So it's going to be fun. And it'll be, it'll be very comfortable for you to come in and, and play your tunes. So tower, antenna, transmitter, we've, we've covered a lot of that. That's what it looks like. So I was down here, throw it over, you know. But uh, anyhow, there it is. So we're going to go about 20 feet up from that tower that's on top of the hose tower. And that's why it is taking us a little bit longer than we'd like. Um, that's the US Cellular Tower. And even though we have the rights to that tower, there's still the FCC, the FAA. Uh, telling us all these things we have to do and we have to wait a certain amount of time to do all these things. So our on-air date is July 15th according to the FCC. However, since we have to go through a number of different studies to get this um, approved and all the studies that need to get approved are through the federal government and the Federal Communications Commission and the Environmental Protection Agency, they will allow us to postpone our opening date or th our construction permit, depending on what happens, because they know we're kind of waiting for them. We hope that doesn't happen. We hope July 15th will be uh, on the air. But at this point, until we get some definite answers on when all these waiting periods are going to end, that's, that's where we stand. So I mean, just to wrap it up, I think the best thing about what's going on is uh, Jeff Robbins is here from Sun Prairie Media Center, and I always think of them because they have a great platform. Yeah, you can raise your hand, Jeff's right there. 
he, they're getting a radio station too. And how many other people are from community media or low power FM in here tonight? Raise your hand. Yeah, see, we all stick together. Um, they have a great platform in Sun Prairie because they got the younger kids, middle school, they come in the studio, they start producing programs, and the high schoolers teach the middle schoolers. And then when the middle schoolers get into high school, they teach them, and it's a nice, secular circle. So we're going to build that in Monona, too. It's going to take a little bit, but that's going to happen, too, because that's a perfect platform. And, yeah. <laughs> so it's, we're going we're gonna to try to get as much into the media that we use every day as we possibly can and, and not stick to one platform, obviously. And that's the goal. you got to have programming, right? And many of you are wondering, okay, what's this going to sound like? Well, first of all, there we go. There are three words that define the programming of our Monona radio station. You know, like in real estate, they go, it's location, 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 right? It's local, local, local. That's what this is all about. The example I will give you is this. If we are faced with a situation of covering either the Cub Scout Pinewood Derby or music, we will always cover the Cub Scout Pinewood Derby. Always. Okay? Now, who's in charge of all of this? Well, it's the Program and Operations Committee, Nell Satino. She's our progr the program chair at MMI. She's got a great background in public television. Mike Bailey, program chair, the great background in record companies as well, the music business. Dennis Krause. Dennis is a long-time Madison announcer, but he's also the host of Motorsports Minute, a nationwide program. He's not here tonight because he's at Daytona Speed Weeks because the... Daytona 500 is going to be happening here this Sunday. Adam Hillsmeyer, many of you know him as Adam Elliott, the longtime news and digital director at Triple M and WOLX, who is now head of special initiatives for the Dewitt Center at the University of Wisconsin. And finally, Tom Tuber. I'll read the official Tom Tuber thing in a minute, but let's, let's get the lineage here. So Paul Meyer sits in the Walgreen parking lot and calls me. Then Paul calls Bob, and then Paul and I call Tom. His notes go back eight years. He's been involved in this a long, long time. Okay, so here's the official bio. Let's do this, because you want to know about this guy. Um, 11 years at Triple M. Programmed commercial stations in Chicago, Columbus, Ohio, and Rochester a producer for the NPR station in Chicago, WBEZ, and WXXI in Rochester. He started in college radio as a young college broadcaster and then came back as a faculty advisor to Elmhurst College. And for the past three years, he's a volunteer at WSUM, the campus radio station at the University of Wisconsin. Um, he's currently a programmer at AccuRadio, a giant online internet music service. This guy's the real deal, and having this person as our volunteer, <laughs> thank you, Tom, program director is really wonderful, Tom Tuber. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you to Lindsay. Thank you to Paul for making that phone call. I was sitting in the waiting room at Zimbra Honda having my car serviced when he called me eight years ago and said, you want to do this thing? And here we are. So thank you. As Lindsay mentioned, I went to uh, Elmhurst College outside of Chicago, and my girlfriend was a PK, a preacher's kid, whose father was the minister at Lake Edge United Church of Christ on Buckeye Road. So I came up here for spring break when I was in college, and I came up here two summers to work in Richland Center at the little radio station up there, which is still going strong. And... Um, 
I, you know, while I live on the east side of Madison, I have watched Monona grow and thrive and evolve all these years. I was cruising Monona Drive when I was in college, and I'm still cruising it today, and it's good to be a part of this project. I've got a story about my life and my career and my connections to Monona. And when we started thinking about this and using those magic words, local, 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 <coughs> one of the things I kept coming back to was, what can we do that nobody else is doing? We're not going to try to compete with the Madison radio stations. We're not going to try to play the same music, only better. What can we do that they're not doing? And local, local, local will drive all of those decisions. And I started thinking about the stories of the people who have lived in Monona, some of whom I've known since I was in college. So I wrote down storytelling. Then I discovered that the uh, Monona Public Library has a storytellers program that's very popular and successful. They had an event a couple of months ago, which I think was taped for the cable channel, starting with kids' stories up, and up through grown-ups telling their stories. We'd like to tap into that. We'd like to do the same thing on the radio, give people an opportunity to tell their stories. And as a history major, and thinking about the history of Monona, I was thinking, well, we should make a special emphasis of that, because some of these people that have lived here for a long time have wonderful stories to tell. Lo and behold, a Monona History Club started up a couple of months ago. Just as we had a tremendous turnout tonight for this meeting, they had a tremendous turnout for their first meeting. We love to get those people involved telling the stories of the history of Monona. Some of you may know StoryCorps, which started as a feature on National Public Radio and has turned into a, a nationwide phenomenon. I'd love to see a StoryCorps project start up in Monona. We would broadcast the stories on the radio station. They could be archived at the public library, for example. I've been talking that idea up. If any of you are involved with the library, friends of the library, history majors want to get involved in that, let's talk. That's, that's one of the local, local, local things that I think we can do that, that nobody else is doing. We have reached out to any number of other uh, community organizations. I see some of the people that we've talked to are here tonight. We want to promote their activities. We want to promote their events, perhaps broadcast remotely from their events. I see Christy Schilling from the Chamber of Commerce here. I recognize you from your YouTube videos. We look forward to working with the Chamber as well. Uh, Lindsay, I know you've talked to Darren Bush, the paddle sport guru, about uh, making that a part of uh, what we're doing. There's a group called Youth in Education that currently does a show on Sunday mornings on WSUM. We've talked with them. They like to produce programming for us. Uh, Madison Media Institute has been referred to. That's where Will comes from. Uh, any local musicians and bands that want to get their music on the air, the Madison Media Institute students would love to produce your, uh, your band, and we'd love to play them on the new radio station. And, of course, Monona Grove High School, which has been uh, referenced here, high school sports, music activities. We will talk about matters both silver and blue on this radio station. Uh, all kinds of community events. I don't need to tell you all about the 4th of July, of course, is a big deal. Canoe Copia, uh, the Chili Cook-Off. I would love it if this radio station became the official radio station of the Wisconsin Wife Carry Championship. That's one of my goals. That's one of my goals. So those are some of the ideas we're going to do. And I probably think if we are successful with the help of all of you who want to volunteer and help us produce programming. I could see 50% of our programming being this type of thing, produced by local volunteers involved in what's going on in the community. What are we going to do with the other 50%? Well, there will be music. And with the technology today, you don't have to have a disc jockey sitting there in the studio spitting the records. Um, Jonathan Little, who some of you may remember as the program director at Z104 and before that at WISM, he made both of those radio stations number one. He's been developing uh, a music format 
Uh, and I approached him about using his format on our radio station, and Jonathan Little said yes. He calls his format the train. Uh, it's Americana music. It's Steve Earle and Lucinda Williams and Lyle Lovett and Wilco. So that's an example of what we will run when we don't have uh, volunteer programming on the air, and I'm really excited about uh, putting the music on our radio station. The other local, local, local thing that we can do that nobody else can do is we can talk about public safety issues. When there's a, an accident on Monona Drive, when there's a, a, a bank robbery, or some other crime like that that ties up traffic, God forbid there should be flooding in the spring. All of those public safety issues will be a major priority. In fact, it's part of the mission statement. When the FCC created this low power FM category, one of the requirements is that you cover the safety, public safety issues in your community. Having the radio station in City Hall makes it really convenient because right across the lobby is the Monona Police Department. And we're looking forward to working very closely with them when they've got some information they need to communicate to you and the citizens in Monona. The radio station will be there to help. Uh, we've got some exciting ideas about how to cover traffic just for our part of the world, from Monona Drive and Broadway and this end of the Beltline. And uh, I can't wait to uh, get started because with the FM at 98.7 and the streaming from day one and the phone app from day one, it will be very clear very soon that the earth revolves around Monona. If we need one thing that we do not have, it is the person who will fill that job. We need a volunteer, volunteer coordinator. Beep, 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 beep. We need a volunteer, volunteer coordinator. I don't care if this is a retiree, if this is a mommy at home, if this is somebody who just is looking for something to do, We'll give them something to do. So now, you could volunteer yourself, but better yet, you can volunteer somebody you know. You don't have to tell them. Let us know. We'll approach them. If you think it's a good idea, do so. We need that person a lot. Because as you've just heard, this radio station is all about volunteers. And the coordinator of the volunteers will be critical. Not only finding people, but working with Will, working with Tom, and making sure that they're well trained. Because the training process at a volunteer organization that's highly technical is going to be something. We have got all sorts of wonderful volunteers. I want to bring up just one other volunteer who's in the audience. If I said traffic to you, you'd all think of cars, bikes, boats. If you're in the radio business and you say traffic, that isn't what you're thinking of. You're thinking of the order of things as they run. The traffic system is a critical thing. And finding a real traffic director, they don't grow on trees. No, they grow in row two. Carol Horning is here, who's been a professional traffic director for many, many, many years and then went off to the magazine business for reasons I don't quite understand. But anyway, she works in Monona. And I called her up, and the truth is, Carol's a radio rat, and she got right involved again. Thank you. You have no idea what that means. <laughs> now, I'm going to turn over the microphone to Will Nimmo and the mayor of Monona, Bob Miller, who will come give us the answer to this critical question, Remember, we had about 100 entries, a little more, in the call letter contest. Come on, Will. You, you, you guys get to do this. I'm just going to press the little button. This is the fun part. As Lindsay alluded to at the beginning of the meeting, 
we were overwhelmed with the response. And to see WBOB up there in lights, I, I cannot tell you how touching that is to me. Unfortunately, North Carolina had those call letters, and no matter how many times I voted for that, it just never came up. So to Will's credit, he was the one who organized, and we had some great, great offerings. But as simple as you think that might be is to come up with three letters that line up after the W, almost all the letters in the world have been taken. And through military call signs and all kinds of broadcast stations, there it was very limited. So we put together a work group, Will coordinated, made the spreadsheet. We had 100 and 107 entries, and he filtered to make sure those call letters were available. Again, as we discussed the great volunteers we had creating the station, we also had wonderful volunteers helping with the judging. So Mary in her role, Pat is city administrator. Will was there just to make sure we all behaved. Because Lindsay had entered call letters, we excluded him. But um, um, Professor Jim James Hoyt, emeritus professor, dean of the journalism school, the head of the broadcast department at the UW, he volunteered to help judge. And um, Michelle Vetterkind, the president of the Wisconsin Broadcast Association, which handles every radio station in the state of Wisconsin, she hosted us and she participated in that. So to refresh your memories, um, what I put up as the first prize is a $50 gift certificate for any dining establishment that you would desire to attend in Monona. And I have no budget as mayor, so I asked Pat Marsh, city administrator, if he could find that $50. So the winner will be able to just come to City Hall and tell them where they would like a gift certificate, and we will select that. And so without further ado, Will, would you please announce the call letters for our new radio station, 98.7 FM. So the call letters will be WVMO, the voice of Monona. And I know Mark is back there because I told his wife, you guys should really, really show up. <clears throat> so Mark, you want to stand up? Come on up. And in addition to the $50 gift certificate, he will be the first guest on the air date of the radio station. And we hope he will share with the history behind why he selected that. So you can give us a sneak preview of how you came up with those letters. Oh, man. Well, I, I made so many entries, I can't remember uh, <laughs> why I made that particular one. Um, I do have a radio background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my son over there, Micah. Uh, both my sons, uh, Eli, who's at UW now, and, and Micah, have been involved in, the, in the, uh, the AV club over at Monona Grove. It's incredible. And so this added uh, feature to the community and to, to uh, Monona Grove is, is outstanding. So I do have a little bit of a radio background back in the, in the uh, mid-'80s. I, I worked at uh, Q Country 106, and, uh, and uh, a little bit after that went over to Magic 98. But uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, new addition to, to, the, to the community. Thank you very much. And I might just add, when Tom was talking about all the great programming opportunities and your awareness of our amazing award-winning Library of the Year in the state of Wisconsin, that we have this um, storytelling program. Sally Buffett in the background was just nodding. So I think we have w another one of the Buffett family is replete with on-air talent. Cool. Perfect. So since we love contests, uh, we want to keep it going and see what people can think of for a design. Now you know that this is what it is. The voice of Monona, WVMO, 98.7 and all that is Monona. 
we know there's a lot of graphic design people out there. You'd like to design things, logos, font, maybe make some your own font. But we need help, right? Because we don't want to just do it ourselves because it might not be the best. None of us thought of what Mark thought of. I sat in front of that computer for hours typing in letters, and I never thought of that. So we want help. So this is kind of what we're thinking. I'm just going to go through it so that you have it all in front of you. Whoa. So let's submit some designs to me. Uh, and of course, I don't have my email up there, but come talk to me and I'll give that to you by April 1st. So yeah, so in the spirit of contest, please let us know what you can think, what you can put together. Have it be a JPEG. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but something simple that's not like 20 megabytes that I can't get into my inbox, basically. Um, you can, again, do as many designs as you want. We will have a judging panel again, and we will announce the prizes in the coming weeks. It, it won't be a dinner, it'll be something else, but uh, we're hoping that we can get some, some good design out of there. Again, I'd like to bring up Jeff, because if you look at their logo, you guys had a logo design contest, right? Yeah. And it's cool. So I'm following Jeff again on that and saying, let's do that. Um, so feel free, tell everybody you know. They don't have to live in Monona. Um, and uh, let's, let's get some cool designs and see what happens. Think of what looks good on a t-shirt. All right. You've already seen the screen, so you have some idea. We're going to do Q&A. Remember, say your name. If you're from Monona, say the street you're from. And then I will repeat the question because, as you know, we're videotaping this. We want to make sure that people get it. All right, hands up. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, Paul Meyer. <laughs> the first question. Yes. So would it be possible to have Mephisto do home talent baseball? What a wonderful first question. Who wants to answer that? Mephisto? Probably comes the voice. The answer is yes, Paul, thank you. Other questions? Yes. <laughs> yes. Not determined yet. The question was the uh, hours of operation. Not yet determined. It will not be 24 hours at first. It will be 24 hours eventually. I think that's a, a fair way to put it. Tom? Yep. Um, certainly, we'll probably sign on the air at, at probably 5 a.m., and we'll probably go right up to midnight or 1 a.m., and it depends. Um, uh, weekends, maybe a little later. Great question. Others, please, questions. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, Court. How do you get help, for, and how long does it take? Another great question. Um, first of all, remember that volunteer coordinator. We are right now coming up with our procedures. So we have to do a whole procedure manual for literally everything. One of the, uh, and I'm going to use this as a, a tag up to something here. One of the things I put up there was church events. Think of the IHM festival after the Memorial Day parade. Well, this is a city-licensed broadcast facility. So is there a question of separation of church and state? We have to find out all of that sort of stuff, too. It, who knows? Um, so you will get training. It, nothing will be done as a surprise. We would like to say yes sooner rather than later so you can be thinking of it. And on that note, let me say this. I've always used Jerry Vale. There are a lot of people who want to play their Jerry Vale records. You're troubled people, but you still may want to play your Jerry Vale records. We're very interested in hearing from you. But if you say, I want to play my Jerry Vale records once, we're not going to talk to you again. We're not interested in hearing about a one shot. You're volunteering to do some stuff on our radio station on a regular or ongoing 
or more than once basis. Yeah? Everybody got that? Good. So um, more news to come on your question. Yes? One thing, Lindsay. One thing I can assure you as I'm getting tweets and Facebook messages from some of my sarcastic friends, there will be time delayed on everything. <laughs> so for those of you, for friends, yeah, for, for my friends specifically, <laughs> that nothing will slip through the cracks on that. So you've been forewarned. There is a tape delay unit in there. I hate to keep adding, but you had a good question, like, how will we learn? How will we get trained? How will we do that? I want help on how to do that, too. So if, you know what I mean? Like, seriously, if you want to volunteer, get in right away and help put the training manuals together. Help with how it's going to operate. That's the more the merrier, because we're putting all the equipment together. We may not, we're going to put a manual together knowing the equipment, not knowing what someone coming in it doesn't know anything, how should we put that manual together based on somebody who doesn't know what this equipment is? So we need help putting that together. Should I do the Phil Donahue? You could still do the regular show from uh, Vilas County, from Florida, you know, wherever. That's all I have to say. So keep it in mind. You know, you could uh, you could do a show from wherever. Yeah. One of the uh, lines on the application is how much prior experience do you have? And that'll help us determine who already knows how to run a radio program. And perhaps those people can help some of the newbies that have never done it before. So uh, if you've never done it before, it's OK. We will help you through it. But if you've got some prior experience, we really want to hear from you. Yep. Of any sort, like traffic. Mention something about the fact that we have a programs and operations committee, but it doesn't mean those people are invited and no one else. We need, we need people from the community to come to these community meetings and say, how about this program? How about that program? I got a garden in the back and I'm very passionate about it and I want to do a program about that. Whatever it is, the community, it would be great if you guys came out and were part of these committee meetings. And I really hope somebody wants to do a polka show. Somebody in this room used to have a column in the newspaper that talked about people who had nice front yards. I sure would like to have something like that, just saluting somebody's front yard or the secret backyards of Monona. Here's somebody who has a really cool backyard. That's one of the wonderful things about having a studio in City Hall that has the police station also as part of the same walkway. We will have access to our studios. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful situation. Bob Miller is very much responsible for getting us that studio space. And it gives us flexibility that just is very unusual that we could never have had at the high school. I mean, it's, you know, you don't want people, this is really cool. Uh, and again, back to Paul's point about an IP connection anyway. The capabilities of our remote equipment, uh, one box that will do what's called POTS, plain old telephone service, a phone line, that will do Wi-Fi, that will do cellular. We'll do all of those things out of one little box and get broadcast quality out of all of them. It's really something. Yes, back there. Yes. Yes. Absolutely, call-in will be absolutely something we have really nice capability. And uh, doing call-in from someplace other than the studio at first will be something we have to work on, but it absolutely is, is, can be done. So for instance, if Mayor Bob wants to be having breakfast and take a call-in at the Green Forest, there we go, um, yes, you will be able to do that. Will we do that week one? Probably not. By the way, another thing about week one, anybody who tunes us in the first week and says, oh, I don't like that, go away. 
Just go away. Uh, we're, this, we're making this up as we go along, and we're having fun doing it. All right, what other questions for you? Back to, to Jeff's point of can I come in at 8 o'clock? You can, but you could also come in at another time on the weekend that you're available, record your show, and then the automation system we have, you put in there, see you, Jeff, say bye, Jeff. Okay, Jeff's going to basketball practice. Uh, you're right, you can record your show, put it in this automation system, put your music in, say your, you know, your liners, whatever you want to do, create your show, plug it into our system, walk away, and then it'll play on Tuesday, and you just record it in on Saturday. Uh, right? So did we pick the right guy to head this up, or did we pick the right guy? So thank you very much, Lindsay. Thank you so much. That's great. I'm shutting this microphone off. I'd like to thank, yes, Heather. Uh, they are not scheduled yet. We will make sure that they are publicized well. Paul. Absolutely. Yep, yep, we want to do that. Facebook, yes, yes, on uh, a community media Facebook page is the place. YouTube, Facebook, really good stuff. God bless my wife for putting up with all this stuff. Thank you, everybody.